Abby here with Scrap and Abby, and I'm back with another paper napkin transfer tutorial video for you. This was actually a request by two of my lovely subscribers, Sherry Vaughn and Michelle Keller. Hi ladies! You had commented on my initial video and asked if you could use this technique on canvas. Well, you know, I've never tried it, but I'm going to try it right now. So I wanted to do a video just to film this with you ladies instead of just commenting back and saying, yes, you can, it works. Let's do a video so I can share with you that it really does work or no it doesn't that we can kind of test it out together so what I've done is I've gathered together um, just a couple different sizes of canvases that I have and I have a couple different types of canvas I wanted to test it out on all the different types that I have so I could give you um, a better I guess demonstration if it works on just more than one type of canvas material what I mean by that is this is just a 4x4 four four square and sorry for the glare it's still wrapped and this is hard a hard back I don't know the technical term for this type of canvas but it's hard it doesn't have the um, frame around it like a stretch. Well, I know this is called a stretch canvas. So I wanted to try um, doing the napkin technique on a stretch canvas as well as one that just got the hard backing. So these are just some 4x4 four four squares. And then um, I do have another size, which is, this was a two pack, I think, from Michael's, I think, or I can't remember where I bought these. And these are, oh, what size are these ones? These are 5 by 7 frames. And so I wanted to try it on this, this size as well. And this is also a stretched canvas. I figure I only have one that's on the hardback that I haven't already used for something else. So I figure if it works on this size, of course it'll work on a larger size because, you know, it's just it's just a difference of the size, not the actual structure or material of the canvas. So this is going to double as a tutorial slash answer question for a couple of my viewers and for anybody else who may have wanted to know that but just, just didn't ask me. And also a um, room decor thing I'm doing for my daughter's room as well. So this is um, what I wanted to gather. I got everything together. So these are two napkins. You guys remember this one from the first tutorial. These are what I bought from the Dollar Tree. They're just a really fun, cute pink flamingo. Since we now live in Florida, I wanted to kind of incorporate some of the flamingo look in her room. Not a lot because that's not really the color palette um, or the theme, but um, I wanted to include that. And then these are some napkins that I've hauled from um, Beals, which is kind of like a TJ Maxx slash Marshalls for all of my viewers and friends back in Oregon. Um, Beals is what they have here in addition to TJ Maxx and Marshalls as well, but that's really what it's like. So these are a little bit different. Um, um, as far as like price point and the thickness. These are like a little bit more designer. So what I've done just to kind of make this video a little bit quicker than the last one is I went ahead and already cut them down to size, peeled off the backing because I shared that in the first video. But I did want to point this out. Since this particular napkin set is from, it's like from a designer so to speak, part of the napkin has her name on there. So I just wanted to kind of point this out for you ladies. When you're getting ready to put this on your project, whether it's this size of canvas or even, you know, whatever, you want to make sure that if you do not want her name, which I don't, on the project, you want to make sure that you're using the peep, uh, the pieces that are opposite, the other three squares, or obviously you can just, you know, use this square, but then just make sure it's, you know, off of the edge of the canvas because you don't want her name on there. Unless you're going to put something over it, like, you know, a flower or a sticker or a picture or something, then it wouldn't matter. But if you're not, like I'm not, I'm leaving them blank. So I want these to be kind of like decorative tiles. Um, I just want to point that out just to let you know that that name was on there because I didn't notice that until I was cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and set these off to the side. I have them paper clips. Ignore if they're blowing around. I have my ceiling fan on. It is hot here in Florida even with the air conditioner on. So I have my ceiling fan going. And then again it's just a cheap little plastic wrap and I already have my towel down and my parchment paper. I'm already ready to go. So I'm going to pull these off to the side. And then the first canvas I'm working on is actually this 4x4 stretched piece. So we're going to go ahead and just start that. And I'm going to pull these two pieces off to the side. i got to put my um, rulers on everything because they keep wanting to blow away. So I have my iron set to the same temperature as the first uh, video, which I will link below so it's easier for you to find. And just to show, show you how we have it stacked, I have my um, towel, I have my piece of parchment, and then I have my 4x4 can stretched canvas plastic wrap already over the top and then I've already positioned the um, the napkin but let me just adjust it because it is kind of blown around now that I've picked it up again all right so we're just going to try this out I don't see why it wouldn't work I mean maybe in the center because it's a stretched canvas maybe I have to put something in the um, underneath the canvas to kind of be a support I don't know we'll try it and see so we'll just kind of go ahead and press the iron down and then um, 
you know, you really don't have to be as careful with the plastic wrap touching your iron this time because obviously this is a much smaller piece um, of a you know project I'm trying to put the iron or trying to transfer on. So the plastic wrap is way inside here, so I don't have to be as careful. But I really do want to focus on the corners and the sides just to make sure it sticks really well. And while I'm doing this, I did want to mention I am going to also do this technique on the sides of the canvas because I because they're going to be dimensional and when you walk by, you know, walk into the room, you'll see that it's just plain white. Now I could just stamp on it, I could just paint it with a coordinating color, you know, whatever, do some doodling or something like that, put stickers, what have you. But I really kind of want to make this look like one cohesive piece like I bought it this way. So I'm just going to do this and I'm not going to do anything other than this and then I will come back on camera and let you know and we'll do the final step. I will try to watch the clock and let you know how long it's taken me to do this part, okay? So we'll be back in just a moment. Okay ladies, I'm back and it's been about three minutes or give or take a, you know, a little, maybe a, like another 30 seconds or something since I turned the camera off and I think this is probably about done. I'm going a little bit longer because I just wanted to make sure since this is a different surface. So we'll go ahead and set the iron off to the side and we'll peel this back. And again, the plastic and stuff is probably gonna blow a little bit because my fan's on, so I apologize for that. And just wanna be careful, I wanna test it to make sure it's not too warm and it's not too bad. But look it, I think it was successful. It's on there. So I'm gonna go and trim this away really quickly and we'll take a look at it. And then I will do the flat canvas. Now you could, if I would've um, had this measured Actually, it probably would work just perfectly just to fold this over, you can see right here. But I didn't, um, this is overlapped just a tiny bit as you can see. And it's just a little bit too shy right here for me just to flip it over. So what I'll have to do is just go ahead and cut off some strips and kind of do the sides. Because I want it to be a little bit more uniform. It's going to be kind of um, janky because it's not going to be flush. And that's going to bother me. So um, that is a good tip for me to be pay more attention to that in the future. So hopefully you ladies can learn from me from that mistake um, of not measuring that properly. I didn't even think about that because that would look really nice to have it just wrapped all the way around solid, but we'll see how it looks. And if I can't get it to look right, then I'll just, you know, paint the sides a solid teal color, so not a big deal. And I do have a pineapple stamp, so. And then what I'll do is, is set this down and I'll cut it properly with my craft knife to kind of trim that off since it's not paper, it's not going to just be real flush, but it's on there for sure. So I think that's a really cool technique using it on a canvas. And I want to thank uh, my two subscribers, Sherry and Michelle, for asking. Now, if it looks like this might come off a little bit, you want to do the same thing that I showed you in the other video where you just put the paper back down and you just kind of go back over the edges and the corners a little bit because sometimes that can be a little tricky with it sticking properly. But um, it didn't look like it was peeling up for me, but just to kind of seal it. We'll just do this one more time. And then I'm going to switch over and we're going to do that flat canvas because I want to try both of them on camera just to see the difference of that. So we'll just run that back over. And there it is. It's on there awesomely. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my other canvas. And since I don't have a small one, um, I don't want to you do the flamingo in the small. I want it to be in one of the bigger. Actually, that's not true. I do want it to be in the small. So let's do the um, flamingo on this one. Let me just peel the, let me get my better scissors here, and we'll just cut the plastic film off. Sorry, ladies, I probably should have been a little more prepared for the next phase, but it'll take just a second, because I just want to make sure I'm covering all my bases and answering questions on you know, that you ladies ask of me because that's important. That's why I do this is to share and hopefully teach people stuff and also to learn myself because I also watch other YouTubers for really cool, fun techniques. So we'll do this. Actually, let's pick this up and get this down on the right side. <clears throat> and then we'll get the flamingo. And we're just going to put this right. I kind of want to make sure I get more most of the flamingos on here. So let's kind of do it this way because that's going to give me three or so right there kind of on that tile and then we'll just put this down over top and then we're just going to do the same process I don't think this one will probably take as long I'm guessing because because it's a flat back canvas so 
I think it might work just a little bit quicker. But just so you're not getting bored watching me do this, I'll go ahead and turn the camera off and then I'll come back on and let you know approximately how long it took me to get this to stick to the flat canvas. Be back in just a moment. Okay ladies, I'm back and I took a little quick peek and just as I thought, this one is actually already done, but I'm just going to kind of seal on the edges just a little bit just to make sure it doesn't peel up. And I'm guessing I'll have to use my craft knife to also trim this as well. Now, if you ladies don't have happen to have a craft knife, you can just use, you know, some finer point scissors like this and just kind of spend the time to trim it off really easily. Um, I happen to have a craft knife, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to set that off to the side. And then I always like to try to peel from the, um, like, peeling towards me instead of peeling away, just to kind of prevent it from wanting to lift off on me get my paper set down on my rulers and we'll go ahead and pick this up and just like before you always want to be careful because you don't know how hot the material is going to be and since this is thicker than paper I want to be make sure I'm being really careful when I pick it up so and this is a little bit warmer than just the cardstock the back of the canvas so you want to make sure you're just being really careful of that but as you can see it is on there so I'm going to go ahead and hold this in my hand and we'll just quickly trim this away now, the sides of this particular canvas are quite a bit narrower than the stretched canvas. So, yes, I could have um, flopped this over to the edge, which would give me a pretty much seamless look um, when I do this. But I think I'm going to go ahead and just probably just ink this a little bit because it is a pretty narrow width of um, canvas edge. So, And there you go. So there it is. And, of course, I need to touch that up a little bit. You can see a little bit right there. But you can tell that it is on there. And I think it looks great. So here are the two canvases together. So I'm going to come back um, once I get all of these done, uh, even on the larger canvas. That way you're not watching me repeat myself again. And let you ladies see what it looks like when I'm done. If I remember, I'll come back and do the last side of this canvas on camera just to show you how I'm going to match it up. And I might even measure out the napkin properly this time and then fold it over in enough width on each side to just kind of have that rolled over look because I think it'll be more seamless and better looking. So I'll try both ways and see which way I like the best. So I'll be back in just a few minutes, ladies, with the completed project. Okay, ladies, I'm back. Um, this is the next uh, tile canvas I was working on. And as you can see, I went ahead and already folded it over just so it was kind of a seamless look. Yes, it does show the white here, but I have, you know, I can fix that um, with just simply putting like a strip of some twine or something on the side like that, which is what I'll do. The reason why it's doing that is because I cut these napkins into uh, four quarters, so it's not quite wide enough. Now, if I was just to cut the napkin straight in half, I would clearly have enough because I could overlap it, but I really wanted to try just to use a smaller size so I can make one napkin go further for the project. So I wanted to show you um, how I do this. It's really pretty easy. You just want to be very careful because you are holding a hot iron over you know, it's not flush to the table like when it's flat. So this is the side I've already done, and I'm just going to flip to this side here and then just fold it over, and I'm going to put the um, paper back down. Now you want to make sure if you're doing this, you want to rotate clockwise. Otherwise, if I was to go counterclockwise, I'm touching the side that I just ironed, and it's going to be warm. I don't want you ladies to burn yourself. So if you go counterclockwise, you're going to keep going this way and this way and this way, and by the time you get to the fourth side, this is already going to be cold because you've already been moving it three other times. I hope that made sense. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this and make sure your surface is nice and sturdy, and then you just want to fold this over like that, and see this side, it's going to completely cover almost. So that's, I like that. And you're just going to take your paper, and this is where I said it's a little bit tricky. You just want to make sure you have your paper. You slip your hand underneath, and you're just going to hold um, hold the canvas on its edge. If this makes you nervous to do it, don't, because I don't want you to get hurt. And you just grab your iron, and you're just going to press over the side, the edge, like this. And this doesn't take as long to do because it's flat, hard surface, because it's the edge of the canvas, even though it's a stretched canvas. So just make sure you're being very careful with this part. But if it makes you nervous, you could even just simply put some liquid adhesive or score tape or whatever on the side and then just put the napkin on that way if you don't want to hold the iron this way. Whatever makes you feel more comfortable is what you want to do. So we'll just do this for another quick second here. Pull it off and then just be really careful and like I this way I'm gonna pull away from me because I have it where it's going this way. So I'm just gonna pull away from me 
and then you can see that it is um, stuck on there. So I just turn to this side and then keep repeating it until all sides are done. And then um, what I will do is I was going to show you as I cut strips to, fill, to do this side, it's going to be the same process where I just put a strip of the napkin, or excuse me, the plastic wrap, then the napkin, repeating exactly what I showed you here. So I won't do that just because I don't want to um, you know, take too long to do this tutorial. So I'll be back for real this time when everything is done. See you in just a minute. Okay, ladies, I'm back and I have completed each of the canvases that I'm using for my daughter's room. Now, the one I shared with you earlier in the video where it was the hardback one, the non-stretched canvas. This one I'm going to actually use for something different. I may cover over this, I'm not sure, because I really wanted to keep these all uniform. I only had five of the 4x4 stretched canvases um, left in my supply, and I didn't want to have to leave to go get another one. I really want to kind of get this project finished because I need to move on to the next one for uh, my daughter's room. So I wanted them all to be uniform. My, my worry was that these were all going to be popping off the wall with the same dimension and then I'm going to have this one that's really super thin and kind of flat and I don't want that kind of a look. So I will be using this in a different application and I'll be sure to share that with you ladies when I do that down the road. So what I've done is I went ahead and just um, put some of the twine around the perimeter or the edge I guess is a probably better word of um, each side of the canvas and all I used was just some of this jute twine that I have in my hot glue gun and if you want to see um, how I did that be sure to check out my quick tips with Abby video playlist and it's the one that's named um, Dollar Tree crafting tool or something oh no Dollar Tree spatula so I have I'll have that one up on my channel as well so you can go check that out but um, just for this video, I didn't want to show all that part. So I did that because I really wanted to have that finished edge because as I mentioned, this napkin was totally fine because it was a bigger square when I cut into a quarter. But as you can see, this napkin, you know, compared to the size of this napkin, one square, you know, it, it's obviously much smaller. So I did, even though I was as careful as I possibly could be and I measured it out and all that stuff when I did push it down some of the sides were just like a smidgen showing the white and that just bugged me so I really wanted to complete it so what I ended up doing the one where I had to piece it on that was I did it but it was a little tricky so I'm really glad that I thought of the idea as I'm going which a lot of you probably were saying to me Abby no don't do that do it this way and it took me the first canvas to figure it out but that's sometimes the creative process the journey and is what I did is I just made sure I folded it down so it was a seamless um, a seamless look on the sides and it was really super easy to get that iron down and I just think that jute twine adds a really nice touch to this it gives it just a little bit more texture and dimension when it's going to be on the wall so I don't know exactly the formation but I'm this is kind of what I was thinking and of course I'll share you know a picture with you ladies when I get done with the room um, in the final room video and um, that's how it's gonna look I know it's kind of off camera I'm thinking whoop sorry my little Dotson just moved my tripod Bella sit still sorry about that ladies it started with like why is that moving earthquake <laughs> anyway so I just wanted to share this with you that's kind of my thought process I'm not really sure how I'll do it for, for um, you know a little mini gallery wall I guess you could say so that is um, the little video for you ladies sharing you sharing with you how you can use the paper napkin transfer technique on canvases whether it be a stretched canvas like this one or whether it's the flat backed hard canvases like this one here. So I just wanna thank Sherry Vaughn again and Michelle Keller also for asking that question because you ladies were very helpful um, and influential in this design project for my daughter's bedroom because I wouldn't have thought to put the paper napkins on the canvas for her room. So I, I thank you ladies for that and I'm gonna give credit where credit's due. It was your lady's idea. So thumbs up on that one. So comment below and let me know if you like this video and if you are going to try to do the napkin transfer on canvas yourself or if you've already done that and you have a video or blog post or just photos somewhere online I would love to see so please be sure to comment and include a link so I can go check out wherever you have your crafty stuff uh, shared because I would love to support you ladies as much as you all support me so thank you very much happy crafting happy planning and happy scrapping and I'll see you in my next video bye